even stand a chance. Even more difficult. Thank you, Sister Marjorie. Very good points. And as you said, it, it, it helps you to sharpen your preparedness and your repentance, isn't it? Yeah. Are we in agreement with Sister um, Marjorie's points? Yes, I think that's, that's the, that's, that answers the question. How does that affect you and your reading of Revelation? If you hear warning, you remember what happened in Grenfell? Yes. You remember with the tower? For those of you watching online, you might not be fully aware, but the tower that got burnt down in London. With, with, it happened in Spain three weeks ago as well. Did you hear about the one in Spain? where the cladding on the side of the building killed about 25 people. But the problem that happened was people were in the uh, building and they were told by the fire services to stay put and be rescued. In other words, the fire doors will close and the various um, safety features will, will, will protect. Will protect. Okay, on the main system. Okay, right. So same link? Okay. Right, okay, yes, yes, okay, thank you. So, brethren, we're going live again on the main camera system, so hopefully we should be back up and running, but if not, we, we, we could still stay broadcasting. Media team, are we ready with that system? Absolutely sure? Okay, so we're going to switch over. Is it the same link? So, a different link? So, brethren, that's watching. Is it the same link? So, different link. Okay, so brethren that's watching on um, the smartphone broadcast, we're going to issue a new link on the WhatsApp group. So those of you that's on WhatsApp group, you could see the link. And those of you that's on Facebook or YouTube, just log back in and refresh your screen back on YouTube and you'll, you pick up the broadcast again, please. So stay with us and bear with us. Sorry about that. God bless. Um, we, we crossed over now? We're good now. Okay, so seamless. Oh, well done. We thank God. Sister Simone? So, um, we need you to get past sleeping in Sabbath school. Put you on blast. Put you on blast. Uh, there you go. <laughs> that woke you up. <laughs> no, but we talk about the system of warning, which is the point which is it's relevant. I didn't just digest. I didn't just divert, divert in jest just now. It's a series of warning that's saying that if you're sleeping and there's a fire alarm going off, you need to wake up. You understand me? I need to wake up. You need to wake up. Do you understand me? Um, so you can't even listen going back to the example I gave you about Grenfell Tower because it's the government that gave people instruction to stay put in the high rise building if there's an emergency and what they ended up doing they stayed put and the entire building went up in flames and they died do you remember my point is from the example you can't even listen to this world government because they won't even give you the right warnings to let you escape um, problems are we understanding Yes, you have to look to God and God only. And it's very key because question three at a revelation in the shower this morning as well on this one. Question three, which I'm, I'll share with you in a minute. So question three is going to tell you how you could um, help the government of God give the right warnings. Amen? Sister Marjorie, I'll let you make your next point and then we move to question two. Sister Marjorie, the microphones, wait for the microphones. M microphones. Um... And oh, the way talking the about Grenfell Tower? Yes, the way the people mm -hmm. were told to stay put. Yep. I think common sense alone <laughs> should have let those people know I agree. when there's a fire, get you out. run. You get out. You Just get out. like there's a judgment, <laughs> try to escape. <laughs> Absolutely. You run. Warning. Absolutely. Absolutely. There, you see? there is no way a fireman would tell me stay put and the fire i've got to, even if i have to jump through a window somewhere mm. i'm not staying put yeah. because that's how the people died i know what you're saying but you know sister marjorie i agree with you in theory but i want to tell you something that's why god says the heart of man is desperately wicked who could try the reins of it yes except god the creator and let me say why i'm not calling these people wicked by the way the point which i'm making why i mentioned that the heart of man, even yes. when you know what you should do and what you should do for escape. Same like with the word. The solution is there, but something get hold of us and let us do something else. Even the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 7, the things I know I should do, them I do not. And yes. there's a conflict going on. I'll give you an example. A few years ago, 2017, in the middle of winter, I just came in, I came home late on a Friday night, and I saw a bright orange flame in my, through the back windows of my house. I didn't think much of it. Well, well, it became a Moses experience where I went to see, well, what was this that keep 
lighting up and getting brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. It was one of the most scary things. When I went and saw it, it was fire. My neighbor's place was on fire and the, the, the flames went up even higher than the, 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 the roof of the house. Massive fire. Fast forward a bit, the fire was so strong till it broke the back glasses, glass, the windows, burnt the gutters, and that's not from the actual flames, you know, that's just the heat. Burned all of that, burnt the fence, killed the plants, all sorts of stuff. And the trees as well. Just, just, just the heat, that's not the ones that were actually on fire in terms of the flames. Long story short, <laughs> to put Sister Simone and Blast again, all the people that the fire service told all of us to get out of the house <laughs> and wait uh, away from the street, right? And for some reason, well, don't worry about my neighbor. <laughs> I'm responsible for my own household, right? <laughs> but even against my instruction, she decided, no, we need to go back in for passports and ID because that's the one thing you don't want to lose. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying, brethren? That you're against your better judgment, and she ran back in, even when I'm shouting at her to come back out, I'm a neighbor as well. Even when I'm shouting at her to come back out, she decided she was going to get... So you, 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 even in a moment, brethren, against your better judgment, you could do some stuff that, that you wouldn't otherwise. So yeah, we say common sense, I'm saying it's deeper than common sense. This is far more serious. But we need to move to question two. And the reason I said, because we're on a time limit, and it's a very meaty subject. But I just want to go back to one key point that came from the, the first part, which asks, how does the warning, oh sorry, how does the unfolding cycles of warning keep building momentum? It started from a, a throne scene. I'm showing you the momentum. Then it started with the angels getting involved. Then it started with the angels throwing a, 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 a censer. You know, like in the Catholic Church, you see them spread the censer or holy water, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. Or the smoke. And then that spilt onto the people, and then it spilt onto the earth, and then you start seeing cosmic events unfolding, lightnings, thunders, so you could see things building in a crescendo. Does that make sense, Reverend? So that was the momentum that was building. Does that make sense? Yes. It started small, and it started becoming dramatic. Are we still live? Yes. Are we good? Okay, wonderful. Okay, so question two. We have to move to question two, because it's a very meaty topic. What happens between the seventh seal and the first trumpet? Talk to me. And that's Revelation chapter 8, verse 1 to 5. I'll let the media team read it for us. Revelation chapter 8, 1 to 5, evangelists, if you read that. And um, we should compare it with, um, <clears throat> compare verse 3 and 4. And in chapter 6 of Revelation 9 and 10. And the background and significance of what we're talking about here is in Exodus and in Hebrews. We'll get to the minutiae in a minute. So let's start with um, Revelation chapter 8, verse 1 to, 1, and, 1 to 5. I'll let you get the microphone. So you could. Yes, I'll let you ask on the microphone, please. Sister, it's, it's behind you. There's one behind you. You want to ask now or after the reading? You want to ask now? Yeah, go on, sister. Um, what is the significance of that holy water? What does it do? <laughs> I just gave an example. I'm not saying it's, no, in, it's no, in the Catholic Church. Okay, okay, for, yes. Oh, yeah, okay, so... Oh, so we were at a funeral together yesterday, Sister um, Dita is asking, what's the significance of holy water when you see the... the so, just at the final, the final rite of the funeral, they started sprinkling holy water on, towards the altar and towards the body, right? Um, what's the significance of holy water? Now, these are um, typology. I'm not saying that is to be practiced. Same like with the altar, with the incense, the live coal in the Catholic Church and in the Church of England, They've got a golden altar. You see the priest walk around with it with a hot coal inside it with an incense. And it gives off a smoke in the, in, the, um, in, the, in the church. So these are coming from um, some of the historic practices in the sanctuary. Not necessarily the holy water part though. But, and some of the stuff you see as well happen now, brethren. You might frown upon it, but it's actually biblical. For example, the spreading of, uh, the, the, the praying on over handkerchiefs. The apostles did it, and they sent yes. it around to people that couldn't um, physically be in the temple, isn't it? Yes. And they received healing. Yes. Yes? So, so, but if you see it done now, it looks strange to you, like what kind of witchcraft in the church if people start praying over a piece of cloth and dis distributing it. While at the same time, some churches have commercialized this, where they sell bottles of olive oil that's been prayed over and all that. These things are not... There are corruption of biblical practices. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. And just to answer the final point, there was a specific fragrance that God instructed for the temple, that should be burnt in the temple, and he instructed 
that it should not be burnt in any other household except his temple. It's a special ingredient. Mm. Um, it's in the Bible. You can read these things, yes. by the way. With a incense. Merge, the incense. Yes, incense. So yeah. this is the incense on the altar. But the most important part of this, just to narrow your point even further, the vial that was there contained the prayers of the saints. And we're going to come to that in question three. Okay, brethren? Mm. That was what was contained in this vial. Um, not the incense, now the vials. Okay, Sister Marjorie, and then we'll go back to the question. Sister Marjorie, go on. Okay, um, I answered, I asked, the, I elaborated on the, what you were talking about, mm -hmm. you know, escape warning. Um, so, you're now on question two. Yes, I'm on question two. So, if, so save your points till the reading is, takes place then. Yes. Okay, save your point, please. So, let's move forward together. Evangelist, over to you. Revelation chapter 8, 1 to 3, then Brother Said is going to go to um, chapter 6, 9, and 10. Okay? And there was, uh, and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Mm -hmm. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel that took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Brother Said, I'm waiting on Brother Said. Brother Said is going to read um, nine and, um, chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Revelation 6, verse 9 and 10. Okay. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they had. Okay. Held, sorry. You flooded me with confidence. And, and they, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. And, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Okay. Amen. Thank you, Brother Said. And then the question says, the first part of the question says, we should compare verse 3 and 4. What happens in verse 3 and 4? Just reread that, just to home in on it again. 3 and 4 of chapter um, 8. It's a very meaty topic, brethren, so I want us to keep up. Brother Sylvester, God bless you. I hope you're staying. Uh, you look like you're staying. You have a seat in Zion. Come on, brethren. Let Brother Sylvester feel welcome. Yeah? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. Thank you. Sister Doreen as well and family. I'm really happy to see both of you together. Seriously. God bless you. Back to you, my brother. Flood me with confidence, brother Said. Right. Verse 3 and 4. It's, read it, yeah, reread it. It's the, the, word said, the instruction says we should reread verse 3 and 4. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Stop there. Don't even read um, no further. The question asks, what happens between the seventh seal and the first trumpet? Brethren, let's look this way. Read verse 1 again, and you get the answer definitively. Because I don't want to cut, but, what you, but you, you're absolutely right. But let's use the microphone so brethren online could hear us. Please? The mic wasn't off just now, so we need to switch it off whenever um, we're not using it. Eh? Please. That's okay. Um, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Thank you, Sister Cousins. It says what happens between the seventh seal and the first trumpet. And remember, evangelists elaborated on this for the last several weeks. The seals represent timelines of global events. Does that make sense, Reverend? The seven seals, remember the, the, the various horses last week, right, evangelists? One of it was famine, one of it was warfare, one of it was fake religion or fake peace. Do you remember, brethren? So the question is asking, what happens between the seventh seal and this first warning? Because the events are broken up in different categories. We can't go into all of it now. 
There was what? Silence. Do you want to say that again, Sister Cousins? Um, there was silence in heaven. There About was, the space of half an hour. Thank you. There was silence in heaven for the space of half an hour. You know, brethren, it's important, without even getting into the details now, um, just yet, it's important to have silence as part of our worship. Are we in agreement? It's important. No matter what you do in the week, no matter what you do in the church, there's time and place for silence. You remember Pastor Johnson led us last week? So let's have a moment of silence before we have any more pr prior or anything. Just meditate and think what God done to us, done for us. Are we in agreement, brethren? So even in God's grand plan for the universe, he gives a place, a space of what? Silence. But this silence is very significant. This was what I was telling you that I had a, um, a bit of revelation about. That the space of half an hour, you could calculate what it represents. If, there, if, if we have a day for a year principle, you could work out or reverse engineer how long a half an hour period would, would, would last for in a chronological sequence of, of a, a, a day or months or weeks. Does that make sense, Reverend? So if the Bible teaches a day for a year principle, you could do it like a mathematical equation, because the Bible is full of numbers. If a day has 24 hours, do this for me, me the team, me the team. R write this down. If a day has 24 hours in it, are you following, brethren? So we have to convert a day into hours, and we have to convert a year into hours as well. But a year is 360 days biblically. Right? No, 365. So we need to calculate a day into hours and calculate a year of 360 days into hours. And then if 24 hours represent X amount of days, X amount of hours for a year, are you following? Then you could reverse work out what an hour is and then you could work out what half of that one hour is. Does that make sense? That's a mathematical formula. I mean, we can't do all of it now, but you could work that out in your own time for those of us who's interested, and you could work out SJ, you could work out um, how long a half an hour is. Okay, so the next part of it says, what is the background and significance of the golden altar? What's the background and significance of the golden altar? This is very important because it has to do with the book of Exodus, chapter 31 to 10, me the team, and Hebrews chapter 9, verse 4. The reason I'm keeping me the team and reading today is a very meaty lesson, so I want it very st streamlined. Did you want to read, Sister Marjorie? Is that why you have your hand up? What happens between the seventh seal and the first trumpet? What's the background and significance of the golden altar? I'll let you make your point first. Uh, sorry, I'll let you let the reading go first before you make your point. Yeah? Okay, so Exodus chapter 31 to 10 and Hebrews chapter 9, verse 4. Sister Marjorie. And thou shalt make an altar mm -hmm. to burn incense upon it. Of shittim wood thou shalt make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, and the top thereof, and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof, and thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. And two golden rings shalt thou make to it under the crown, under the crown of it, by the two corners thereof, upon the two sides of it shalt thou make it, and they shall be places for the staves to bear it withal. And thou shalt make staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put it before the the veil that is by the ark of the testimony before the mercy seat that is over the testimony where I will meet with thee. And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning. When he dresseth the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. And when he lighteth the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering, neither shall ye pour drink offering thereon. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it, once in a year with the blood of the sin. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonements 
once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto the Lord. Amen. Good morning, uh, blessed Sabbath. Thank you, Brother Said and me, the team. Um, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 4. Thank you, Brother Said. So we see Exodus. Let me. Uh, yes, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 4. Which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. Okay, leave it on that. Leave it on that. Leave that on the screen so that those online could see that script, that verse as well. Leave that verse online. Okay, Sister Marjorie, let's go to you, my sister. You wanted to make a point. The question says, or the second part of the question, or question two, it says, what is the background and significance of the golden altar? And from what we read just now in Exodus, Revelation, and Hebrews chapter 9. Go on, my sister, over to you. What's the significance of the golden altar? Okay, while the microphone goes to you. What's the significance of the golden altar? In Exodus, you see also that it talks about the mercy seat mm -hmm. above the altar mm -hmm. and the, the, um, the incense to be burnt morning and evening. Mm -hmm. And it should be a perpetual sign. In Revelation, and it's okay, also the, the prayers of the people arising to God. Okay. In Revelation 8, verses 3 and 4, the, the souls of the saints are also crying out. Okay. Oh Lord, how long? Okay. That's also a sort of prayer. Yes, that's not a Because a sort they're of it asking, is. how long it will is. we be avenged for okay. what has been done to us? Okay. Thank you, Sister Marjorie. So, Sister Marjorie, in a roundabout way, answered it that the golden altar that you see in Revelation here is the same golden altar you saw from the temple. Are we in agreement, Reverend? It's the same altar that you saw from in the temple, and it's the same altar that became part of the Ark of the Covenant. If you look at Hebrews chapter 9 here, do you see it? It says Ark of the Covenant. So the mercy seat is on top. Do you remember the mercy seat with the angels around it? Do you remember? Uh, no? So the Ark, so the significance, we have to go move away from the typology. The significance is that the people of God through prayer can receive mercy because now we're not offering sacrifices like what Aaron used to do. The same incense that Aaron used to burn is for mercy. Does that make sense, brethren? Are we in agreement? So Sister Marjorie said it's that the people of God can receive mercy, but it goes further. If we look on the screen, all eyes on the screens. Is, is, is it up? All eyes on the screen. But look what was inside the ark or inside this altar. Look what was inside it. Inside it was what? Manna. You know what manna represented? you remember where manna came from? Who made manna? God. There's no other person. So inside the ark of this altar was, let's put that on a wider point, providence. Providence means God's provision, right? Because food is not just um, bread. Your house is God's provision. Your clothes is God's provision. It takes divine sustenance to keep us going in this system, brethren. Are we in agreement? It's divine provision, divine manner that make us even eat. Are we in agreement? Yes? And let's look what else was inside it. Aaron's rod. Remember what was in Aaron's rod? Remember when it budded? Rod means what? Authority. Are we in agreement? Authority. So God's word and God's system, God's altar, God's plan, it gives authority. No one else could second guess. And the final bit was what? The tables of what? Covenant, which means what? The law of God. Are we in agreement? The law of God takes precedence. In other words, as I said earlier, no other law um, has as much impact on the universe as God's law. Does that make sense? In fact, man's law, every country you go to, is a different thing. It needs the Most High's law to um, keep the people of God going. Are we in agreement? Sister Marjorie, make your last point. We'll move to question three, please. Note that the law of any land is actually coming from the Ten Commandments. That's the template. Yes. What they call natural law yes. or common law. You're absolutely right. Yeah. There's another word for it, truth. You can't recreate a thou shalt not kill. 
you can't let your ideologies or ideations say anything better or more just than that. Does that make sense? Your law can't um, uh, bring about any more justice than God's law. Psalm chapter 19 says this. Psalm chapter 19 says, the Lord, the Lord is what? Perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is what? Sure. Making wise the simply. In other words, God's law has far more transformative outcomes on people's lives and destiny and as a society and as an individual than any law that man could um, um, write. Does that make sense? In fact, man's laws, they have to keep recreating it every few years because it becomes outdated or loopholes or laws of unintended consequences. So I don't need to go on that route too much. But thank you, Sister Marjorie. The law of the Lord is perfect. Thank you. Natural law reflects the laws of God. Um, question three. Question three. Question three says we should review the first four trumpets in Revelation chapter 8, verse 7 to 12. What is it, what is targeted with respect to the first four warnings? How is the scope comprehensive but the measure of destruction limited? Me, the team, if you read for us, Revelation chapter 8, verse 7 to 12. This is a very important question, brethren, a very important aspect of scripture. I want you to soak it in. Sister Doreen, I want you to soak this in, all right? It's very significant, very significant. So don't just get hung up on the, 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 the different symbolisms being used. I want us to break it down to understand exactly what it's saying and what it means for us. Are we clear? Let me hear an amen. 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 The first no angel sounded, mm -hmm. and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. Mm -hmm. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star was called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died because, many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them that was darkened and the day shone, the day shone not for the third part of it, and the light and the night likewise. Thank you, Brother Adams. So the question says we should review the first four trumpets. What is targeted with respect to the first four warnings? And how is the scope comprehensive but the measure of destruction limited? We're not going to break down or repeat what 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 um the the various aspects of the trumpet are, because it's, it's on record, it's written, it's there, you could read it in your own time. I want us to focus more on, it says, what is it targeted? What is targeted with respect to the first four warnings? What is targeted? Sister, Sister Liz, this is of more consequence to focus, what is more targeted? Sister Liz, go on, my sister. I got correct in understanding um, while going through. I'm sure I'm here for you to correct and to give. Um, the, the, the first, it's targeting um, our uh, vegetarians, our dry lands. It, is, that, is that what you're, you're asking? Oh, no, go on. No, it's, it's, if yeah? you, if you, okay, let's unpack some of it. It's also to help you figure it out some more. The first angel sounded, verse 7 of chapter 8, I'm reading of Revelation, right? The first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled mm. with blood. And they were cast upon the what? Earth. Earth. So therefore, so our, who do you think is being targeted now? Let's go further again. And the third land. part of the trees was burnt up. Yeah, the land. Yes. The third part of the trees were burnt up, and all green grass was what burnt up. Mm -hmm. And the second angel sounded, as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became what blood. Blood. 
So, so, so if I could answer now, mm -hmm. where the first one is affect our dry land, because um, it says to burn up whatever it is, so therefore yeah. you won't be able to plant whatever it is. Thank you. I want to say, say, say dry land. Let's just say land. Uh, land, yeah. okay. And then the second part is the sea, which is the, the, the water. Um, let's it's a difference. It yes, it's let's... a difference because it, it repeats again the river. Mm -hmm. thank so you. then it's the salt water first. Thank you. Thank you. Fish and all that, mm -hmm. whatever is there, it goes back to the fresh water, which mm -hmm. is the river, thank you. and everything that is going to be affected. Mm -hmm. Then the fourth part, it goes a wider aspect where the sun, the moon, mm -hmm. the stars, even the very night and day, thank you. Will thank interrupt. You. Now, you get, now, now you're on point. Verse 11 now. Look yeah, what, look what and, verse 11 and does. Verse 11, um, and, the, and the, the water would actually even come to bitter because wormwood is something that is actually bitter. So that tree will, when it enters the water, they won't be able to drink because Thank the you. water will be totally bitter. And the last, bit of, last bit of verse, I'm just pushing you so that we could get through. Yeah. Quicker. And the last bit of that verse says, what, who died? Uh, which verse is that? We're verse reading? 11, the last verse. Verse 11, screen, and many screens. men will die, of course, because you will have water Thank you. in that. So Say that no will more. take you. Say no more. So now you see what's been targeted, brethren, that all of this stuff will affect all of humanity. But it starts with nature. It starts with the plants around you. So no, talk to me. This is what I'm saying. It's of more consequence for us to understand what's happening here. Remember I said to you, this is a reflection of what happened under Pharaoh's regime. Do you remember? Where if locusts came and ate up all the vegetation in Pharaoh's time, what do you think would happen now? If, if we, it's the same outcome if fire or some destruction was to destroy our plants, isn't it? There's no food. All food comes from plants. Whether you're vegetarian or meatarian, <laughs> all food comes from plants because the animals of the first eat the food, the plants, then you eat the animal. So all food comes from plants. So if... if we just see locusts. Locusts, of course, in Pharaoh's time would be a nuisance, like a lot of flies. But you have to think about the economic consequences, isn't it? Where all plants get eaten up, there's no food, there's no medicine, because a lot of medicines come from plants as well, and there's no housing it would affect as well, because if you lose your plants, the trees, you lose all timber, and a lot of timber is, goes into housing, you know that, right? You lose a lot of clothes, clothes become expensive because the plants, cotton, mostly clothes, I mean, they use petrochemicals now, like oil, to make artificial fabrics, but a lot of your clothes come from um, cotton, isn't it, Reverend? Talk to me. So think about these stuff. Silk, because the silkworm would need to eat the, the, the mulberry bush, then they could form silk. So a lot of these stuff would have major economic consequences. I'm rushing you along just to show you what these things represent. Let's reverse engineer that now, which means if there's lots of economic consequences going on around you, it means that it's part of God's warning systems. Are you following what I'm saying, Brethren? Okay, make your point on the microphone, please. If you, if just, just get in the habit of using the mic, please. So, if things are suddenly becoming expensive or inaccessible, Brethren, it means that it's a warning. Let me just give you two more points. Make your point, and then I'll give you two more points, then we move on to the second part of the question. I was just about to touch on that, um, as you realize that um, nation is actually going up against nation, and for me, that's actually a warning. And each time I hear there's war in a certain part of a country, then I hear, okay, there's going to be shortage of food um, here, because guess what? There's, um, they're going to be ships that's going to be destroyed. So for me, it's literally warning really, um, in the last days. Say no more. Say no more. Very good point. Very good point. Look what happened. To, to stick with Sister, sister, um, sister um, Cousin's point, do you hear about the fighting in the Middle East where they're attacking the ships that bring in goods from the Far East and the prices of things are shooting up because the, the Egyptian canal is um, being blockaded by this fighting? These things is part of um, the fulfillment of Scripture. It's wars, it's fighting that's creating these economic outcomes. It's part of the warning system. Do you see what I'm saying, brethren? Look what it says as well. Half the shipping disappears in the sea. Do you see that? Um, here's the other part as well, as Sister um, Liz said just now. If the, if the sea becomes problematic, guess what happened now? Fishing becomes problematic because you can't go fishing. Price of food, another food supply shoots up. Here's another thing that affects us as well. It says water becomes bitter. There's a global shortage of fresh water. A lot of countries are suffering from the lack of fresh water and sanitation. Do you see? Diseases as well that breaks out on the back of lack of fresh water. So... Don't take these things for granted, brethren. It's saying to you that it's 
part of God's early warning system. They call it climate change and they put a tax on the back of it to, to, to make more money. Do you see what I'm saying? That you shouldn't drive your cars, go places, you shouldn't use this and that and all sorts of stuff and put the price up of all sorts of stuff. Do you see what I'm saying? They tell you that you put toilets with smaller tanks and give you half flush options on toilets. I'm telling you how this thing plays out in real life. But guess what happens? There's not enough water in the small toilet tank to flush the loo, so you have to flush the loo six times for it to clear, which end up making you use more water than if that allow you to have one big tank to start with. Do you see what I'm saying, brethren? These things have real term, real world consequences, but they use smart ways to tell you that we're saving the planet and let you reduce your water consumption. Thames Water is putting a lot of meters in houses telling you that we need to charge you more for water because water is a precious commodity. But the real early warning system is God is showing you that there are economic consequences for a world that doesn't want to hear. Are we in agreement? Uh, probably not just yet. I'll take the question, but not just yet. I just want to nail the second part of it, and then you could ask your question. The second part says, how is the scope comprehensive, but the measure of destruction limited? How is the scope comprehensive, but the measure is limited? It sounds like a bit of a trick question. But how is it, how is it, how is the scope of this problem comprehensive but limited? Okay, let, I knew that it would stump a lot of people. Okay, Brother Said, Brother Said is going to give us an answer. And then Sister Marjorie. Uh, is, is it the fact that it's in all places, like it's in the Thank moon, you. it's in the earth and so Thank on? Thank you. But it's like, it's limited in the sense that it's a third. Thank you, Brother Said. Round of applause for Brother Said. Come on. Oh, you didn't hear? Okay, okay, sorry. So, okay. Brother Said, I didn't hear you, so you repeat it, please. And I'll say no more, I move to Sister Marjorie. So it's everywhere in the sense that it's on the earth, it's on the moon and stars and so on. In the waters. In the waters, everywhere. So mm -hmm. it's ubiquitous. But then at the same time, it's a third. So then it's like, it has its limit, its point. It doesn't kind of completely destroy everything. The word says limited. It says a third of this is destroyed. A third of that is destroyed. Do you remember, Sister Liz, from the reading? I haven't got time to go back over all of it. Thank you, Brother Said. So it's... It's comprehensive in its um, affect. It affects the heavens, it affects the earth, it affects earthquake, lightning, the skies, as you said, the daylight cycle, Sister Liz, you said where the moon and the star, remember you said earlier? Um, it affects the seas, it affects fishing, it affects the plants, it affects the food, it affects clothing, it affects your bills, but God limited it for his people's sake. Does that make sense, Brethren? Okay. Um, Okay, thank you. So we could move to, thank you. So let's move to, let's move to, um, <clears throat> I'll make a quick point and we move to question four. The word says there's a, there was silence in the space of heaven for half an hour. What was revealed to me a few years ago, brethren, that this economic model must fail. It must well, and that will give humanity silence for a bit before the real devious system becomes um, unfolded. <laughs> Morning, Sister Millicent and son and grandson. <laughs> Ricky. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. I, I miss, I miss, I miss saw. My eyes deceive me. Sorry from a distance. Your yeah, granddaughter. <laughs> I misgendered you. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> So Sister Millie, Ricky, and um, his, grand, his daughter, sorry, <laughs> welcome. Very nice having you. Okay, what I'm saying, brethren, is do you remember going back to the altar scene? Because we have to move to question four quickly. Going back to the altar scene, do you remember the only human input in the altar scene was what? Answer quickly so that I could, I could break down some points. The only human intervention in the altar scene was what? Yeah. The only human element in the altar scene, the golden altar, talk to me, was the prize of what? The saints. Now you see, that's the only human input. You are saying it, but you need to say it on the microphone. The only human input, which simply means, brethren, there's a question that's going to give you some more of this, by the way. But it doesn't nail it fully. That's why I'm just breaking it down now. Which means... God is unfolding all of the input on humanity. Have, have we given Sister Millie and Ricky um, a quarterly? Sister Liz? We're on page 41. 
The only impact, the only thing God listens to, brethren, is the prize of who? His people. Talk to me. The only thing he listens to is the prize of his people. In other words, all this destruction that humanity has brought on the planet, God isn't paying them no mind. The only people he listens to and sees as part of his grand plan for humanity or grand plan for the universe is mankind. I mean, the saints. Does that make sense, brethren? We'll share. Someone will share. Right? So, my point is to you, brethren, we're in the season of prayer and fasting. What are you doing to input or influence God's plan? We need to do more praying. Speak to God more. You understand me, brethren? Because that's the only thing that um, takes part in his heaven, heavenly revelation in terms of how the age get rolled out to humanity. And another practical input as well, brethren, if a third of the world gets affected, I'm not saying it's going to be limited in its geography, or geography, but you have to design your life that you could avoid some of these um, economic fallouts. Does that make sense, brethren? If you get more involved in it and get more tied up in the system, quote-unquote system, because they design it that you can't escape it, but if you get caught up in Babylon's system, it makes your life difficult. SJ, shouldn't you be upstairs in your class? Okay. All right. So, question four says, the last three trumpets, last three trumpets are also called what? Revelation chapter 8, verse 13. Review the fifth trumpet in 9, 1 to 11. See, time's against us. You're going to have to speed read for us, Brother Said. And then we're going to have to go to Exodus and Ezekiel. Brother Said, Revelation chapter 8, 13. I, and I beheld and heard an angel lying or flying through the midst of heaven, mm -hmm. saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Okay, so the question says, what, sorry, the last um, trumpets are also called what? Woes or warnings. If you say warn to someone, it's a warning, isn't it? Yeah? And it's not a good warning, unfortunately. Or not a good prognosis. Okay, and then it says to review the fifth trumpet in Revelation chapter 9, 1 to 11. Are we there? Have we got and, time to read all that? And the angel, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto mm -hmm. the earth, and to him it was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Stop right there, Brother Said, because the answer is already given. In the interest of time, I just want to move to the other readings. So, the question says, we should review the fifth trumpet in what we read just now. The fifth trumpet, or the fifth warning, was a warning of what? What war would come? Let's put it simply. Locust, isn't it? And it, the locust should destroy who should it destroy? Let's just answer it quickly so that we don't um, waste too much time. So go back and put it on the screen, please. So it says these locusts will destroy, it's in verse... Thank you. Will destroy, thank you. It's, it's in verse um, 4. We put it back up 4 on the screen. It says... And it was commanded them, the locusts we're talking about, that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither the green thing, neither the trees, but what? Those men who have what? Not the seal of God in, in the forehead. Okay? It goes on to describe what the locust looks like, but we haven't got time to discuss all of that now. But the point is, the symbolism of a locust, but this locust is not coming to eat plants this time. It's coming to, this, to eat who? Men. Men. People that isn't 
um, coming under the seal of God. I'll break this down even further in a minute, but let's go further. Who are the locusts described and what is their significance? Who are they not to earth? We answered just now. What have we, where have we seen this before? This is my point which I'm coming at. We saw this in the book of Exodus where locusts were sent as a uh, plague to who? To Pharaoh because he won't release the people of God. That's in, in chapter um, 10 and chapter 12. And Ezekiel 9, 3 to 7. I'm just speeding through this question. Ezekiel 9, 3 to 7. And then we're going to break it down quickly, then move to question five, please. And the, glory of the, and the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh, and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after, after him through the city, and smite. Let not your eye spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. They that began at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house, and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth, and slew in the city. Okay, thank you, Brother Said. I'm going to speed us through these answers now, okay? Are you with me, brethren? Are you with me? Ricky, you with me? Yeah? It's <laughs> familiar. you. Everyone's with me, right? Okay. So, what we said just now, locust, was symbolic of the, the, this angel's warning or woe. Are we following, brethren? Locust was the, 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 the threat. Does that make sense? And the locust was not going to destroy just pl not plants like what we saw before, but it was going to destroy who this time? Men. Now, I'm saying this to you to say this thing. I'm giving you the answer so in the interest of time. The men that will be destroyed, it says, is those that haven't got the mark of God. Okay? What this is simply saying, brethren, here's a question I want to put out there. What do you think this locust represents now? I just want a one-word answer. Because if it's destroying people but not destroying um, um, plants, like what used to happen in, in Pharaoh's time, what, what, tell me something that's destroying us now, that's really eating us and devouring us like how the locusts would eat the plants. Tell me. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. The cost of living, that's it. The economic model of this world is designed to devour you, eat you up, eat up your resources, empty your cupboards, empty your pockets, empty your brain because you can't even pay for education now, empty your health that you can't even see a doctor or a dentist, Hem empty literally all that you have. Is the if you read what this is saying, simply put, as Brother Said rightly answered, the locust that's designed now is the economic model. The capitalist, the Marxist, the communist is designed to eat you up. No other system is, is devouring the people of God like the economics. No other system. Don't tell me about devil. I mean, the devil is behind it, obviously, because the word tells you here. But it's unpacked through an economic tool. And I'm saying to you, brethren, it's part of um, God's warning system. Does that make sense? Okay? But here we go back to Ezekiel. A lot of people don't know about this part of Ezekiel. Where did, the, where did I tell Ezekiel to start from? Start from in the house. So in the house of God, there's people that don't have the mark, you know, unfortunately. People that don't have... So there's people in Zion that don't even believe in God's word, unfortunately. I mean, so help me God, because Peter said, Paul said that I could preach others into the kingdom and I myself become a castaway. So help me God, I've got my failures as well. But God started where? In the house. That's what Peter says. Judgment must first begin where? In the house of God. So, we could talk about the evil system all day long and how the double rent and mortgage, Sister, <laughs> Sister Allison, or the double taxi fare and all that, and food prices. We could talk about all that, Sister Liz, but it first starts from where your belief and your allegiance lies. Does that make sense, Reverend? 
and it takes God's sustenance, as we discussed earlier, to let you escape it. Are we in agreement? Amen? It goes on to describe how the scorpion, sorry, how the locust will sting you like a scorpion and how the, the, it has a human face to it and has paws like a lion. You don't... Lion teeth. It will devour you. A lion is designed to eat you up, isn't it? You, you miss a bill and see how quick the government kick your front door in and bite you. Do you see? Yeah, with speed, with speed. You try to access a court. They don't listen to you, but let the, the, the Mr. Big want to access you to bring you to court. Quick, quick, they could get a decision on you. But you try you to try bring a, a company to court and see, you don't even know where to start. But these people, it's designed to devour you, brethren. The justice system is designed to devour you. If Mr. Big want to have a party, he could get all of the police force lying the street and do road closures for their behalf. You try to call the police and say they are a broken window. They're not interested. Even the justice system is designed to destroy you, to eat you up. You understand me? Eat you up. They want half of your family in one country, half in the other country. Your children here and you there. And just eat you up. Wear out the saints of the Most High. That's the locust here. It's not eating trees this time. It's eating people, as the word tells you just now. Question five. Review the sixth trumpet and describe the scene in Revelation chapter 9, 13 to 19. We're doing speed, speed lessons this morning because, I'm, as I said, it's a very meaty topic to get through in the, in the time that we get given. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four, four horn of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day, and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand. And, a, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and of brimstone, brimstone. And the heads of the horses were the heads of the lions. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. And by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and their tails, and their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. Thank you, Brother Said. From what you read just now, what, what, what kind of system do you think that refers to? Horses mouths to devour, tails to sting, half of the earth or a third destroyed, men on horses, 200 or 2 million horsemen. What, are, what scene does that paint for you? No, no. Uh, <laughs> no, start with W. I'll give you a clue. Thank you, Sister Lee. Say it on the microphone next time. It's a global warfare scene. These brethren is not just for you, as Jesus Christ said in front of the temple, when you see these signs, you should do what? Look up because what? Your redemption draw it nigh. So this sixth seal, or sixth trumpet, sorry, is painting, same like what Evangelist taught us a couple of weeks ago, a warfare scene. All it's, it's designed to do is to not bring peace and not bring harmony. Does that make sense, brethren? Are we in agreement? So when you see these global warfares going off, don't let the, point you, the news point you to this and that and all sorts. I mean, even when you hear people talk about the amount of asylum seekers coming into Britain and coming into Europe, it started on conflicts in their homelands. But they present it to you as an economic threat on the news. But the real problem is some of these countries went to these countries and created warfare and instability and economic injustices which is creating this global movement of people. Do you see what I'm saying, brethren? Because they're not telling you the full story. And what that does is it let people have to be moving, just like what happened. It's not nothing new. It happened back in the time of our ancestors. They moved to different places to find food and shelter. But people's heart becomes so hardened <coughs> to the plight of some people and they focus more on the political issues that come with it than the real problem. Do you see what I'm saying, Reverend? So 
this is telling you, but this is specific to do with Israel this warning as well. With the 2 million people, 200,000, thousand you saw just now, um, army of the invasion of Israel come the end of time on, on um, when Israel will be, the battle of Armageddon will go in full real outcomes. Does that make sense, brethren? So this number is not a random number. It's an actual number of an army of, of uh, invading force that's going to attack Israel in the end times as well. I mean, as I said, we can't do all of this justice in the, in, in the time given. The last part of the question says, where does this instruction come from and why is it significant? Where does the instruction come from from what we read just now? It's in verse, the ver very first verse you read. It's a bit tricky to figure out. Yes, thank you, but at least use the microphone. I keep hearing the answers. No, <laughs> we're going to have to strap a mic to you permanently, right? <laughs> no, no, people can, I can't hear you. Oh, yes, we could address that as well, but stopping a mic being in everyone's... Someone... I'm just waiting for the mic. Okay, in the interest of time, Reverend, I can't wait. That's, what, that's okay, let's move on. So, we just got the answer from Sister Laverne just now. She said, the instruction comes from God. The instruction comes from God's throne, which simply means, to break it down, brethren, all that happens is God's plan being unfolded. Does that make sense, brethren? The, the instructions to do all these things didn't come from nowhere else. It came from, let's go to verse, the first verse. And the angel sounded, and I heard a voice from, from where? The four corners of where? Of the golden altar, which is before where? God. So the voice wasn't coming from nowhere else. The instructions were coming from where God was. Does that make sense, brethren? And the reason is very important. Remember I said to you earlier, the only human interference or, imp sorry, the only human input in this heavenly scene is the prize of who? The saints, which simply means in God's plan, the only people he will listen to as sovereign God is his people who pray to him. Does that make sense? You don't see no part of the scene where angels have anything to do with the instructions except carrying it out obviously and worshipping to say holy and true and holy and just is your judgment. You see no other scene where any of the symbolic items give an instruction. The only scene where human input has any involvement is the prize of the saints. That's why it's important for you to pray, brethren. Amen? Let me hear an amen. It's important for you to pray because that moves the hand of God even in its big picture for the universe as it happens. Sister, you, have you got a mic now? You see what I'm saying? So to answer the question, you haven't got a mic, but to ask a question that you're excited over, you've got a mic. <laughs> a statement? Okay, let's hear you. Let's hear you. Yeah, okay. So but just as um, what you said, um, the only human input that um, is just the saints who are crying out to God and uh -huh. stuff. And I'm just saying also, if you realize that, um, let's say, um, where they mention about the scorpion and the locust and the horses, what oh, um, this, the stuff that atomized that's going to like use to um destroy it has nothing to do with man is gonna man is gonna destroy man it's gonna be a horse and how they describe these thank um you. set of animals or insects thank you thank you sister laverne very good point very good point very good point so sister laverne is saying it's not the horses it's not the locusts it's not the, the the these animals and insects that's gonna do the real destruction if you read the, the description of these locusts in the bible you'll see that it's actually a human being thank you very good very good point so in other words, it's your fellow man that's going to really visit these unjust or injustices upon you, brethren. Amen? Because we're the only spirit beings on this planet that have any legal jurisdiction. So, okay, evangelist want to make a point? Make a point? Just wait for the microphone. So, so, so it's, it's, it's not a locust that's going to come in your house to destroy you this time around, like what happened in Pharaoh's time. It's going to be a locust with two legs, wearing a suit and wearing a tie, and have a clipboard in the hand and a warrant from the court. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying, brethren? So we have to um, be very... You remember what happened with Jesus Christ? One minute they want to crown them, Sister Gloria, say, oh, King of Israel, King of the Jews, King of the universe. And next minute they want to stone him, kill him. And Jesus Christ, when they was trying to crown him, he says, no, 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 my time is not yet. Because he knows what? He knows what's in the heart of man. Do you remember that statement he said? 
that the same people one minute want to big you up, it's the same people tomorrow that's going to try to kill you. So you have to be very careful of your fellow man. Your destruction is going to come not from no random thing. It's your own fellow man that's going to try to destroy you. And we have to be careful of that. Ivan, just make your point quickly. Then the last question that we finish the study. Yeah, uh, that, just to back up that point. Sorry, I couldn't be in for the majority of it. But yeah, it's important that locus um, in, the, in the Bible prophecy is actually talking about a great army. Um, Bible interpreting Bible, you see that in Nahum. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Naaman. Yeah? Nahum, Book yes. Of Nahum, uh, yeah. 3 verse 17. It says, Thy crowned are as the locusts. Thank you. And thy captains are great hot grasshoppers. Thank you. Which camp in the hedges in the cold day. But when the sun ariseth, they flee away. And um, Joel 2 25, it says, mm -hmm. And I will restore unto you the years that the locust has taken, mm -hmm. the, the canker, canker worm. worm mm -hmm. The canker worm, thank you, and the caterpillar, mm -hmm. and the palmer worm, my yes. great army which I sent among thank you. Thank you, evangelist. Right, so you see that, uh, and it also it's an army sent from God. Mm -hmm. um, it also matches in Daniel 12, verse 1, where it says, At that time shall Michael stand up, Correct. that great prince for the people, right? Um, so, long story short, that even goes into then who is the angel that I know, Abaddon I know, and all I of know. that and the, Say no leader, more. the king of that army. Say no more. That's the reason why I said it's a very meaty topic for us to break down in one um, teaching session given the time that we have um, for Bible study today. So thank you evangelist. So all this is a human um, it's, it, put it like this. So you know back in Pharaoh because the word is pointing us back to Pharaoh's time the locust was locusts. The frogs was frogs were frogs. The, 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 what do you call it? The, the plagues were specific plagues sent to target specific spirits that Egypt used to worship or specific gods. This is saying now it's not going to happen in that way, in the way we understand how locusts and frogs and firstborns dying and all that. This is greater, bigger, and far more um, impactful from your everyday standpoint. Does that make sense? And it's coming at the hands of your fellow man. But obviously, just as God used Pharaoh to let Israel wake up, it's the same way he'll use man to wake up his people and get his glory on the back of the evil men's head because they were evil to start with. Just remember, if you read some part of Exodus, it says God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Yeah, yeah. But because Pharaoh's an arrogant man already and wicked, God used him just like Judas. He was already a thief, the word says, that it was so... God ain't going to use a righteous person to get his glory in that context. He's okay, well, you want to be a thief, you're going to be a bad thief. That when my people, when I restore my people's blessing, they'll, they'll realize that truly it's God who have brought this about. Are we in agreement, brethren? Yeah. And it's the same way we're trying to get out of Egypt, it's the same way we're trying to get to the kingdom, the promise of the kingdom. Amen? By God's grace. All right, last question. What was the response of the people after the sixth trumpet this is the more significant question of all the questions so after all the trumpets were sound and all the angels unveiled the different um, um, timelines of what was to happen globally what was the response of the people this is a far more significant one me the team question verse 20 and 21 what was the response of the people 20 and 21 me the team and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their thefts say no more thank you um brother Said. so you see from this reading brethren it all comes back down to the heart of man remember where we started earlier the heart of man Sister Marjorie, I'll let you make your concise point and then um, we um, have to close the lesson. But the point is, while the microphone, Evangelist, pa pass the mic to, to Sister. Who had the mic? Okay, there's one over that side. The, the point is, even after, do you remember with Pharaoh, it took him so many plagues. I was reading it the other day, uh, the other day, yesterday, and he got shook up and his advisors told him that, listen, best we just let these people go. And then he's like, he had a little thing. He says, not so. One of the verses says, not so. In other words, he changed his mind. He see it and then change his mind. So I'm saying to us, brethren, um, Sister Marjorie, go on. We can't be uh, unrepentant. Yes. I wanted to say they repented not. Yes. Was, yeah. But what we 
also have to understand there's a verse in the Bible that said, and seeing they saw not, Here and, there and not hearing there. they mm -hmm. heard not. Mm -hmm. um, I think whether it's the, the, the enemy that is darkening the eyes of men that they do not understand. You remember um, what I said to I, you earlier, I, Sister yeah. Marjorie? Mm. When you said um, common sense, and I said to you that yeah. it's a hard thing because you could... Okay. Even now, like with Peter, he said, no, 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 Lord, I won't do this. And then two minutes later, presented with the same set of scenarios. Okay. Yeah. Uh, take, for instance, mm. I won't say too much because I don't want to criticize people's religion because you do have people who now still worship um, idols. Uh, they go, they buy their elephants and whatever, and yeah. they, they say that's their God. Uh, on one occasion, I spoke to this man. He told me he worships 14 gods. Say no more, say no more. It yeah. was the same Egyptian so, spirit. So, you know, I'm yeah. just saying it is very difficult to get through to people like that but this is and tell them about the living God. Thanks, because sister. it's so ingrained in them, generation after generation. It's like a red rag to a bull. Yeah, then. say no more, Sister Marjorie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sorry to cut you off, but because I'm, over, I'm overshot in the time already. Yeah. But this is wider than just a physical God. It says God of silver, gold, um, fornication, thefts, etc. So it's, it's referring to all the range of human um, um, sinning. So, so it's not just people that bow down in front of an animal, etc., etc. But that, that's the symbolism of it. I mean, even the gold and silver is referring to money as well. The, 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 do you see what I'm saying? It's a far bigger, wider system than what you see right now. You know, sometimes we, we look at, um, at man's system or people sinning, but we see individuals. We don't see what, well, let's use a term that sociologists call superstructure or psychologists as well call it superstructure. We only see the but we don't see the bigger uh, over us, the policies of man as well that force us to sin. Do you see what I'm saying? I could give you so many examples that, that, that push the people of God into compromising situations, separate from the list of your own personal sins. Do you see what I'm saying, brethren? Where if you was to train up a child, for example, and say, what job are you going to choose? And he says, I want to be a police officer. And you think, yeah, well done, very admirable. You say you want to be a high court judge, very admirable. Probably pay a big salary as well, very admirable. But what does a child do, as an adult, obviously, when there's a court case presented before him and he knows that the, the truthful ruling doesn't match scripture, but he has to match what the Lord of the land says? Do you see what I'm saying? Then what happens to that person? They, 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 if they're ruled by the Lord of the land, they're committed a sin. But we don't see it as a sin. We only see someone who jumped over the fence and nicked something as a sin. You see what I'm saying? So this thing is far wider, deeper than just what we see as worshiping or sinning. Okay? All right. So the final bit says, what does it say about humanity and our responsibility as the voice of Jesus to the world? What does it say about us if we hear the word and still not repent, as it says? It makes it difficult for us to preach to the world, isn't it, brethren? But equally, it should compel us to preach the word even more. Am I right? Amen? The two seems like an um, opposing argument. But the point is, our responsibility to humanity is to get the word out more, to help sound the warning. Does that make sense, brethren? But as the Apostle Paul says, even though you could preach others into the kingdom, you don't become a castaway as well. Are we in agreement? Are we in agreement? Yes. Praise the Lord. The lesson could be summed up in one word, warnings. Are we in agreement, brethren? Yes. Praise the Lord. Concluding thought. The seventh trumpet and the third woe is still to come and its sounding, and its sounding will be more consoling. The divine judgment, sorry, the divine judgments of the first six trumpets with their warnings and punishments aren't the end of the story but are necessary steps on the way to God's glorious kingdom. And even in the time of woes, the most important truth of the trumpets is that all of this comes, to the what? Tr comes from the throne. All is under God's authority. He is in control. God bless you, brethren.
And okay, Sister Sister Gloria. While while Sister Gloria wait for the microphone, you just wait for the microphone, Sister Gloria. Um, what we're saying here, brethren, is it's not all doom and gloom. Are we in agreement? It gives you hope that the more these things become unveiled and the more these things come to pass, it means that our redemption joy is even closer and closer. Are we in agreement, brethren? Praise the Lord. Okay, just, Sister, just Sister Gloria. Just a word regarding what Sister Marjorie was saying. Okay, go on. That the man said he had 14 different gods. Mm -hmm. But it is not a weakness to them because they are going to be saved. Because when you go to court, mm -hmm. you have to have a weakness. So it is the weakness against them that they've heard that Jesus Christ is their savior. Okay. This is why you weakness to everybody. Okay. That I hear they you. cannot have an excuse. I hear you. So very you have a weakness okay. that you say to them that Jesus Christ was their savior. Okay. Very good. This very, is very what good I point. I want to say. Very, very good point. Sister Marjorie is coming at it from a legal standpoint that even if they don't become saved, you are a witness to them yes, of sir. the warning. Yes. Does that make sense, Reverend? I can't say they didn't so, hear. So you can't say they didn't hear. Very good point. So we tend to see witness as the, 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 the conversion of people. That's right. But the witnessing here, as Sister Marjorie highlighted, is that you were warned, you were yes. told, and if you stand before the court or the king of glory, you haven't got an excuse that you were not told. No. Does that make sense, Reverend? And we know God won't destroy anyone without he first a give witness. them a warning, a witness. Amen. Isaiah says, ye are my witness. Say it the Lord. Say it the Lord. God bless you, brethren, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Praise God.